never thought I'd be able to film an acne journey, you know, clear skin journey sort of video with actual clear skin. But here we are. I have so much to tell you, so many things to share, so let's get into the video. There's gonna be several parts to this video, including a timeline and a Q&A, so stick with me, it's all gonna make sense. First and foremost, I wanna set the scene, start a timeline for you. I was in high school from 2010 to 2014, I would say I had average skin, I got the occasional breakouts like any teenager does, nothing crazy, although at the time, I feel like my life was being ruined by a singular pimple. But genuinely not bad, not great. I'm sure my skincare routine consisted of the St. Ives apricot scrub and probably no moisturizer. So definitely did not have bad skin by any means, just the occasional breakouts, which would usually go away in a day or so. Moving on to my college years, anywhere from ages 18 to 22. So that would have been 2014 to 2018. My skin was still not bad by any means. I would get the occasional breakouts. I noticed at the time as I was approaching my 20s, I would get more hormonal breakouts around my period or definitely when I was eating a lot of junk food, heavy processed carbohydrates, sugars, dairies, things like that. I would notice the little pimples after a weekend of drinking or something. My my skin would break out, it would get inflamed, but again, something that would go away in just a couple of days with an improved skincare routine, little pimple patches, benzoyl peroxides, drinking water, etc. So after I graduated college, moved out on my own, began working for the first time, my skin was still doing fine. The occasional breakouts, hormonal breakouts, everything relatively normal. It wasn't until the end of 2019 into 2020 that my skin went from zero to 100 so fast. So this was between the ages of 24 and turning 25. It was legitimately like somebody flipped a light switch and my skin just immediately was covered in acne and it was horrible. I was doing absolutely nothing different in my life. Wasn't eating any more sugar than normal. I wasn't um, lacking on my skincare routine. I wasn't eating or drinking really anything different, no crazy new products, you know, changing my pillowcase regularly, the environment around me didn't change, everything possible was the same. There were no drastic differences in what I was doing. I didn't overthink it at first. I thought this will probably go away on its own. I've had breakouts before, they always resolve themselves, like no big deal, except that it didn't resolve itself. Um, it was ongoing, constant, painful breakouts left and right, on or off my period, it was Horrible. I went to my primary doctor and I basically explained the situation. I asked if she would be willing to do lab draws just to see if my hormones were out of whack. I was worried at the time maybe I had something like PCOS because I was experiencing some other symptoms. Luckily, everything was ruled out. All of my blood levels were normal and she just told me that she recommended I go to a dermatologist and look into some options. I've always had a dermatologist growing up. I'm a very freckly, very moly, very fair-skinned person that has had my skin checked my whole life. So I went to my, at the the time I thought was my favorite and the best sort of dermatologist for me. And unfortunately at that appointment, I was completely dismissed and not taken seriously. And I was really frustrated because every time I'd been before in my life for my moles, for whatever, I'd been taken seriously and listened to and whatever. I don't know if it was bad timing. I don't know. I don't want to, you know, try to figure out why that appointment went the way that it went. But basically I was like, hey, I'm really worried about my skin. I've never really had bad skin. I'm suddenly breaking out everywhere. You know, is there anything that you can help me with? She basically said, it's probably masked me. Here's a travel size face wash. See you in six months. I left that appointment feeling just so upset and sad. Another moral of the story of this whole video, not only on how I cleared my acne, but making sure you're going to a doctor or any healthcare professional that listens to you, that values your thoughts, that takes you seriously. There are doctors and physicians and PAs out there that will listen to you, so don't settle. If someone's not listening to you, you can leave and go somewhere else. You really, really can. This was someone that I was with for many, many years, and I don't think I'm going back because I just wasn't taken seriously, and it was very frustrating. I went home, used the face wash for however many weeks to months and realized nothing was happening as I predicted. And then I started to do Google searches and reviews on Yelp just to see if I could find somebody closer to me and within the area. And I did. I was lucky enough to find somebody. However, due to the pandemic, all non-essential sort of doctor's visits, follow-ups, and things were not being warranted at the time. So acne was definitely not something that was warranted, was not life-threatening, wasn't serious. So I was not able to go sort of in a timely fashion. So basically through the majority of 2020, I suffered with the bad skin. I was trying just different things on my own. Um, 
they were not accepting new patients for a really long time. And then when I finally was able to get an appointment with them, they were just so booked and busy from everybody that missed appointments prior to that. It wasn't until January of 2021 that I actually finally got an appointment at this dermatology office. Right when I got to my appointment and my dermatologist saw my skin, saw my photos, immediately she said, do you wanna go on Accutane? I was really nervous. I had heard all of the talk and the crazy stories and the TikToks and the YouTube videos of how crazy and scary Accutane is. So I politely denied going on Accutane first, which I'm kicking myself in the ass for now. I wish I would have done it, but we'll get there. I said, no, like, are there any other treatment options for now? Maybe we can look into that in the future. I want to start with something a little less aggressive because I'm scared. And she's like, yeah, no problem. Let's start you on something a little less aggressive. So she decided to put me on doxycycline, which is an antibiotic and Per a quick Google search, doxycycline is an antibiotic that can treat and prevent infections. It can also treat rosacea and severe acne and prevent malaria, apparently. In my entire life, I've never had a problem with any sort of antibiotics, so I thought, hey, this will be great. And then it wasn't. I went on doxycycline in the beginning or middle of February of 2021, and by March, I had to completely stop taking it because I developed one of the most severe and rare side effects of taking doxycycline for a woman in her 20s. And that is that I developed intracranial pressure. And for those of you that don't know what intracranial pressure means, basically it means there's swelling and there's pressure on your brain and there shouldn't be. And it can cause blindness and serious neurological damage. I laugh about it now because it's comical. At the time, I was certainly not laughing, but I was like, wow, not only is my skin bad, but my brain is swelling and I'm about to have permanent brain damage from this medication. What is happening? Basically, I knew something was wrong because I experienced the worst headache, migraine sort of head pain in my entire life. I'll never forget, I was at work looking at a screen, typing patient notes, and it got to the point where movement of my eyeballs, just looking on the corner of my computer screen or looking, it was, I legitimately felt like my eyeballs were going to pop out of my skull. It was so beyond painful, I could not stand it. I laid in my bed, I felt so debilitated. I had to close the blinds, turn the lights out. I iced my head for several days and obviously just quit taking the medication prior because I thought, this is the only thing that's causing it. I've done nothing different in my life and I'm having these horrible headaches. Called the dermatologist's office. She was like, oh hell yeah, stop taking it. We'll rediscuss at your next appointment quit taking it. So then it was the beginning of March, 2021, went to my follow-up appointment. I was then put on spironolactone and topical trentinoin. Spironolactone is actually a diuretic, so it made me pee a whole bunch. And also per a Google search, it can treat high blood pressure. It can also treat fluid retention, which is called edema and high levels of the hormone aldosterone. So they put me on this to think that maybe it would help with the hormonal acne, the hormonal portion of it. And then the topical trentinoin is a vitamin A derivative. I started taking spironolactone in the basically middle of March until the end of June 2021. I was on 100 milligrams once a day and I was doing the topical tretinoin every single night, completely doing my skincare routine the correct way, doing everything right and still nothing. I noticed with spironolactone that my acne did get slightly better. I had it was less severe looking, it was not as painful when I had the breakouts, but they were still there and I was still actively breaking out on this medication. After several months of being on spironolactone with no significant changes, I went for another follow-up appointment in about the beginning of June 2021 and I basically was like, you see my skin, I see my skin. There's no real difference, what else can we do? And she said, I think your best bet based on your age, your health level, the severity of your acne, the, the way that the other treatments aren't working, I think you should try isotretinoin, AKA Accutane. I was very nervous, I'm not gonna lie, you read a lot of horror stories out there about Accutane and I said, you know what, let's do it. I said, what do I have to lose at this point? Because I'm desperate to get my skin clear. So just as an FYI, through the rest of the video, I'm gonna be talking about Accutane as I did a little bit in the beginning of the video. Accutane is a brand name that doesn't really exist anymore. It's kind of like fallen from the market. There are other brands now of the drug isotretinoin. So isotretinoin is actually that vitamin A derivative that is the medicine that treats the acne. So if that's confusing to anybody, it's just like acetaminophen is the drug and Tylenol is the name brand. 
So isotretinoin is the drug and Accutane is the name brand, except again, the name brand of Accutane doesn't exist anymore. I was taking Clarivis, that was the brand name of the isotretinoin, but because most people know what Accutane is, I'm going to be referring to it as Accutane throughout this video. Once my dermatologist and I agreed on going on Accutane, you have to go through this whole process and this whole program, no matter how old or how young you are, it's called Eye Pledge. And I'm gonna show you what it looks like. But basically it's this online sort of assessment that you have to take monthly that proves you're following all the right steps, you're doing all the right things, and you're not going to sell it, give it away, things like that. This is my little Eye Pledge packet. Um, I don't know if men get these, I would assume they do, but they it's so serious as a female being on it because it can have serious side effects if you get pregnant. You will be reminded constantly to not get pregnant while taking this medication. You have to sign a waiver that says you will not get pregnant, X, Y, Z. They give you all kinds of paperwork and things on the inside. You have to, every month, you have to confirm two forms of birth control. So every single month you have to sign what two forms of birth control that you are using if you're sexually active. You would say things like, I'm using birth control and condoms, or I have an IUD and condoms. Like you always have to say two types, or you can just say that you're abstinent if you're abstinent. But every month you had to sign for that. It was very wild. So this is for female patients, but this is basically the process of getting your Accutane prescription. You go to your dermatologist, you do your follow-up, you do your blood work, you do your pregnancy test. When everything looks good, they send that to the pharmacy. But before you can go to the pharmacy and pick it up, you have to go on iPledge.com and do your monthly quiz. Basically, they make you read all this information. You have to take a little quiz. It's like 10 questions to prove that you understand what it's like being on isotretinoin. And then once you complete your iPledge and you score a 100 or whatever on your quiz, that kind of sends a message to the pharmacy saying that you're allowed to go pick up your prescription. August, 2021, started Accutane. I was on 40 milligrams once a day. September, 2021. Did my th you only get the 30 day prescription, remember? So I went every single month to my dermatologist for six months. You do the blood work, the pregnancy test, and you meet with your dermatologist every single month. September, 2021, she kept me on the 40 milligrams once a day. Then October, 2021 through January of 2022, she bumped me up to 80 milligrams a day. So this means I was taking a 40 milligram twice a day. When you learn and read about the side effects of Accutane, it scares you to death because you can have something really minor, chapped lips, dry scalp, and then it's other things like serious neurological damage joint pain, back pain, nosebleeds, confusion, depressive and suicidal thoughts. What? Surprisingly, I had little to no side effects. So everybody that takes Accutane automatically gets dry skin and dry lips. That is just a given. There is no way out of it. There's no way around it. There's no preventative way. I thought I could cheat the system. I was like, everybody gets dry lips. Interesting, that won't be me. I was wrong. It just, it happens and you just have to embrace it. My favorite product ever is Aquaphor. Um, live, laugh, love, breathe Aquaphor. I have one in every single nightstand, in my car, in all my purses, in my locker at work, uh, in my bathroom. It was my holy grail product while being on Accutane. Helps with the dry lips. I would put it in the creases of my nose as well. I got dry skin down here and a little bit on like my temples, like on my side of my face. And I would just slather my face in Aquaphor and that helped a lot. And also my scalp got dry. Definitely I'm dealing with a little bit of like dry fl flaky skin skin um, on my scalp, which is not fun, but I would rather have that than serious neurological damage, I guess. I did have a couple of random nosebleeds, which weren't fun, but they stopped pretty quickly. There were definitely a handful of times as well that I got lower back pain, which is very common with Accutane as well, but again, went away fairly quickly, but there was definitely some times that it was achy and didn't feel great. I had a very small purge phase in the beginning of Accutane. I know a lot of people worry about purging when they first go on acne medications, and purging just means your skin gets way worse before it gets better. I I think because I was on spironolactone for so long before I went on Accutane, I don't think I had to suffer through that significant purging phase that most people do. So I feel like that was the one benefit of being on spironolactone first. It was just so bad for so long. The texture was bad. It was painful. When I tell you my pimples hurt, they hurt so bad. Just existing on my face hurt, let alone if I was trying to squeeze them or anything like that. It was painful, my skin was red, it was inflamed, it was not a good time. It was, I 
it was not a good time guys like my mental health was in the garbage can i was so not confident i didn't care about my appearance i didn't want to be seen by anybody I barely wanted to go to work half the time because I work with patients in a professional environment. I'm giving lots of education and teaching and helping people move their bodies and, you know, telling them about their stroke or their spinal cord injury or something with their families present. And I feel like when I was having these serious conversations, I wasn't being taken seriously because of the acne that you could see around my mask. Realistically, I'm probably overthinking it. I don't think anybody looked at me differently, but to me, I did not want to be having these conversations with patients, their family members, my coworkers. Like, I didn't want to do anything when my skin looked its worst. I mean, my skin is like the best it has ever been in my entire life. I'll have more photos to show. Um, it just even touching it is it's so soft. I think I've covered everything. I talked a little bit about my side effects, about my timeline, what it's like to go on the medication, how I felt on the medication. And now I wanted to sort of end this video with um, some Q and A's because I posted on Instagram a little while ago asking you guys to send me questions that you had about being on Accutane. And I got a couple and I wanted to answer them. Somebody asked, do you feel that taking it does interfere somehow with your mental health. For me, I briefly mentioned it. Like I said, no, I really did not feel any significant difference in my mental health day to day taking this medication. You know, your daily ups and downs and feeling tired or fatigued, but no significant change. Although I know some people that are diagnosed with things like depression and severe anxiety can be affected by it. But for me personally, I was not. Was it worth it more painful on or off medication? Accutane, AKA Isotretinoin, AKA I was taking Clarivis, 1000% worth it. If anything, the acne that existed on my face was the most painful of them all. I've heard the side effects are super scary. How did you feel? I really didn't experience anything too severe, just the dryness, which everybody gets. It, um, occasional bloody nose, occasional back pain. That was pretty much it. I was very fortunate. I'll see if I can find the full list of side effects, but what kind of helped me through it as well to be less afraid of the side effects is that you could flip over a bottle of Tylenol, a bottle of aspirin and read the side effects that are pretty scary. And most healthy individuals, most people don't experience the severity of the side effects. So if you're worried about that, just keep that in mind. Somebody asked, how long do you have to be on it and what is the dose? For myself, I was on it for six months. I started with 40 milligrams once a day for two months. And then for the remaining four months, I did 40 milligrams twice a day, AKA 80 milligrams for the remaining time. Was it super expensive? Unfortunately, yes, I have health insurance and it was still rather expensive for me. Basically from August to October, maybe even November, it was $250 every time. And then in December I hit my deductible and it was only $27. <laughs> So super annoying. What is something you wish you knew before starting Accutane? This is a great question. Um, I wish I knew about Aquaphor. It took me a long time to uh, establish a love for Aquaphor. I think just making sure you have like the right skincare setup because when you're on Accutane, oh, this was something I didn't mention, but when you're on Accutane, you cannot be on any other sort of acne resolving medication. You can't use benzoyl peroxide. You can't use salicylic acid. You can't use anything else to treat acne, whether it's a face wash, or like a spot treatment. You can't use any of that. I did have to go out and buy a very gentle, simple face wash. I had to buy just like a very gentle um, moisturizer in the morning afternoon. I wish I had a video like this, like truly explaining every little detail, but it made me feel better seeing it from like a real person's perspective. This next question says, is your acne gone for good? I hope so. I've only been off of it for about two weeks now. I have not had a single breakout. And per my dermatologist, even though I'm off of the medication, it kind of still lingers within my body for the next three months. So my skin should stay clear in that timeline. Accutane also has a very high success rate and the chance and recurrence of acne and severe breakouts again is very slim, especially taking Accutane in my adult life. I know there are a lot of people that took Accutane in middle or high school that may have to take it again as an adult, but hopefully taking it this one round as an adult will help for life. We should hope. Is anything off limits while on Accutane? So we briefly talked about drinking. You're not supposed to consume alcohol. You cannot get pregnant while on Accutane. You have to be very, very careful if you're sexually active, making sure you're on the right forms of birth control. Um, you cannot give blood while you're on Accutane. Cannot donate blood, which is sad because I love to donate blood. Oh my God, how did I not talk about this this entire video until literally just now? Sun exposure. 
be so careful. You, while taking this medicine, are like 10,000 more times prone to severe sunburns. You're extremely hyposensitive. What is it called? Photosensitivity or something? I can't believe I didn't mention it until this late in the video. You are so much more at risk and prone to burning and sunburns and sun exposure is just like a no-go. Do not go in the sun. That's why I was fortunate to take it sort of in the cooler winter fall months. I started in August and went through January. So my sun exposure, I wasn't like taking in the heat of summer when I wanted to maybe go to the pool or something. I mean, little things like me just driving for 30 minutes in the sun, my arm would get bright red. Yeah, it was bad. If I went on outdoor walks, I had to lather any visible part of my skin in sunscreen. Absolutely avoid the sun while being on Accutane. Or if you're gonna go in the sun, make sure you have a hat, sunglasses, good up-to-date sunscreen that's like SPF 30 or 50 or higher. Uh, make sure your sunscreen is not expired because you can severely burn yourself if it's expired. I recommend if you ever go on Accutane, try to not take it in the summer months, especially if you love to be outside in the summer. Take it in the fall, take it in the winter where you're more likely to be inside and not exposed to that direct hot sun. Oh my gosh, I still can't believe I didn't mention it until now. Again, briefly mentioned it earlier, off-limit things include tattoos, laser hair removal, and waxing. Because your skin is so dang sensitive that wax and laser treatments can actually really damage your skin and it can also rip the skin off. There have been horror stories of people that wax their eyebrows and they just completely like rip a little bit of the layer of their skin off. It heals and takes a while, but just don't do it. You cannot get laser treatments Nothing like that. Just do all, do plucking and shaving if you are someone that does that. What was your skincare routine while taking it? Because my skin was so dry and so sensitive while being on it, I actually only washed it once a day. So in the morning, I would take my cellar water and a cotton round and just wipe my face. And then I would do a light moisturizer on days I went to work and wasn't really out in the sun or on days that I was off of work, maybe going to be outside, I would do a SPF. Applying the Aquaphor kind of on my lips and anywhere else that I was super dry. Then when I would come home from the day, whether I was taking a shower or just washing my face at the sink, I used my La Roche-Posay face wash and then I would do hyaluronic acid on my wet skin and then a moisturizer to top it off because again, you are so dry. Using moisturizer is helpful, but then using something like a serum that's very light and agreeable with your skin like hyaluronic acid is super helpful. And I'm basically keeping that routine while being off Accutane. I can reincorporate things like vitamin C serums and my doctor also is going to prescribe me that tretinoin, that topical acne cream, just to kind of prevent further breakouts. I think that comes covers everything I wanted to talk about in my acne journey, being on Accutane, the Q&A, the timeline, the photos, just all of the things. This was a highly anticipated, not to be like, it was a highly requested video. Everybody wanted to see this video. But a lot of people did message me on Instagram after my Q&A and they're like, where's the video? Where's the video? It's coming. So for those of you that have waited patiently, thank you. Thanks for being on this journey with me. I know specifically I can think of my quitting dairy video where I was trying to get rid of my acne and I was literally sitting on my toilet filming a video. I wasn't on the toilet. I was just sitting on the toilet. I was taking off my acne patches and I was complaining and talking to you guys about my skin and how it was getting really bad and how I wanted to find a dermatologist. And I could just think back to that Kayla that was like struggling so bad with her skin to like this Kayla where my skin is so clear. I'm feeling better. There's no pain on my face, which was like a huge thing. I was just, my, my acne was so painful. So I've come a long way. The journey has been wild. And thank you guys for being there along with me on that journey. Thanks for watching this video. I Appreciate it. If you have any questions at all that were not answered in this video about Accutane, pimples, things like that, comment below. Let me know. I'll get back with you. Feel free to DM me on Instagram. I'm pretty active over there. I'll read your message. Reach out to me. Ask me. I would love to answer all your questions. So that's all I have. Thank you so much for watching. I love you the most, and I'll see you in the next video.